Uh, Vishal sir, let's let's start in the meantime. Saranjit sir will join. Yeah, yeah. Let us start. So, good evening once again, boys and girls. Good evening to the, all the leaderships, Dr. Suman Bhattacharya, Director Kass, uh, Dr. Prachet Bhunya, Dean Training and Placement, Dr. Priyada Siviswal, uh, Director uh, Dean uh, Kass, and we are expected to join uh, by Director Training and Placement and Industry Engagement, Dr. Saranjit Singh in a short while. Along with uh, us, we have got Abhichit, Mr. Abhichit Ranjan, also uh, is the Training and Placement Officer for uh, the engineering or the in fact for the university and other faculty members from the CAS and their students. So here this is a crowd where there is a diversified uh, uh, different branches are available including all four schools in fact school, school of electronics engineering, school of mechanical engineering, school of electrical engineering and school of civil engineering with school of chemical engineering students. So all the students, welcome to the first orientation uh, meeting for the placements and training activities, which is going to be uh, opened uh, already. Being all, in fact, already the opportunities are started, uh, open, opened up. And uh, uh, for, for that particular purpose, we uh, are compelled and bound to start an initial orientation process so that you are being aware about the processes and uh, about the campus placement opportunities and the different training uh, activities which will make you enable to participate in that particular campus opportunities. So with this background, I would like to invite Dr. Pradesi Biswal, Dean Cass, to have the opening uh, address on this particular context. So what to you, Pradesi Biswal, sir. Thank you so much, Professor Avishek. Uh, uh, very good evening, boys and girls esteemed uh, senior leadership of training and placement and CAS, uh, Dr. Saranjit Singh, Dr. Suman Bhattacharya, uh, Dr. Prachet Bhuya, Dr. Vishak Ray, Mr. Abhijit Ranjan, and above all, our lovable students from 2023 graduating batch. Uh, once again, I welcome you to this session. This is first of its kind as far as the orientation is concerned. And this orientation has been almost preponed. Uh, you can see, uh, if you see the calendar, uh, I mean, across the previous years, in fact, the orientation usually happens towards the fag end of sixth semester. Last year, we conducted uh, probably towards the mid of the uh, sixth semester. And uh, this, semester, this time exactly, uh, we have been doing this session much earlier, almost in the month of December. And uh, why such kind of uh, scenario happened, what necessitated uh, having placement orientation at this point of time? There are many points to be discussed. And we thought exactly like uh, this is the right time to uh, reach you out and uh, get to pass on certain uh, uh, prerequisites which you are supposed to know or certain. Uh, uh, you know, uh, requirements where you have to align yourself with the need of the industry. And it is a clear indication that probably campus placements are almost a uh, kind of pre -pone, you can say, because companies will be visiting early. Uh, we were trying to smell from the trends of the industry this year. So anticipating, uh, you know, such kind of change in the trend, uh, such kind of intent of the companies which you could figure out. Uh, basing on that exactly, we decided to have a session with you guys so that actually you get to know what you need to do, what you need to do and what you need to know and how you could become a real-time contender for the competition called uh, placements. And all of us know exactly KIT has a unique distinction of uh, uh, placements across the entire country. And especially this year itself has been pretty phenomenal in terms of placements and which are certainly i mean created a kind of higher benchmark for you guys or we are we are expecting more from you if we try to compare i mean you guys with the uh, placement scenario across the last two years i do understand pandemic is a hurdle but somehow or other it has been proved by your seniors in the last two years despite the pandemic guys have really performed well and this time we have got almost historic placement you can say by now we have almost rolled out uh, uh, offer you know somewhat close to 
4,300, 4,400 exactly by now. And again, I would also tell this is in fact in the mid part of the placements as far as 22 graduating batches are concerned. So for you guys, of course, the opportunities will be plenty. Or we can we anticipate you the opportunities would be certainly more in number. But the question is, by the day I uh, mean passes by or the years passes by, we see the kind of requirements which have been raised up by the companies have been also pretty high. The kind of competency companies were looking at, uh, say for example, a couple of years before, and this has certainly gone for a drastic change. And we could see. every year there has been a surge uh, in in the depth of competencies companies are trying to look for as far as fresh uh, hiring is concerned so well, nothing to be worried about nothing to be i mean uh, nothing uh, nothing dreadful is going to happen rather uh, we are meeting uh, with each other early and we have already started up intervention with respect to placement from the second year itself you guys have been exposed to several sessions yes i understand for the students who are from the branches like electronics or from the core branches like uh, civil mechanical and electrical they have not been uh, come up to the expectation as far as the present scenario is concerned if i would go by data if i would see the kind of performances you guys have showed in the last two assessment which have which has happened exactly you can say with aspiring minds and co cubes your your participation was poor and your your uh, you know you can say your performances have not been up to the mark in many cases or you can say in majority of the cases some students have come out successful some some students have been showing some metal or some competency which they carry in them but rest of the folks are yet to align because we do not find good i mean good good participation as far as the pre placement classes are concerned with respect to uh, i mean Uh, primarily core branches and followed by school of electronics vis a vis school of computer science uh, as such because we find tremendous participation from the school of computer science and the allied branches exactly for which i understand they have been almost you know uh, i mean uh, quasi ready to face the challenges ahead and i have already made it clear because this year we have already opened up with the placements all of you know you have been notified with epic indi5 they have already been notified with uh, high radius they have already gone through dell ad search so a lot of procedures have already happened i am sure epic will have a test tomorrow itself and very soon probably very soon maybe within a week or two you will also be exposed to high radius in fact so with this time we need to be really good at the prerequisites if i talk about the prerequisites the primary prerequisite prerequisite is career yes career is definitely something very important and you may when i when i say about career some students may feel come on what to do with my career my career is almost done with i have already overcome 10th and 12th yes 10th and 12th we cannot do i mean anything about that but whatever we do we could do as far as our present program is concerned guys all of us know that the benchmarking level in terms of eligibility has also been gone up i'm telling has been going up exactly because we hardly see any company in the present scenario which comes for recruitment for the last two years with the cgpa 6 very rarely of course back papers you know guys with back papers will always be not eligible but remember no more cgpa 6 has been the i mean primary level right now hardly we come across very rarely we come across companies with cgpa 6.5 as their eligibility along with your career so to be on the safer side this third year itself is a kind of you know uh, is a is a, is, a, is an opportunity for you guys to mend your cgpas or to come up with the minimum level of cgpas you need to uh, carry in order to make yourself eligible for the companies so we always say guys with cgpa 7 7.5 they always have option i mean they always have access to majority of the companies they get to remain eligible for majority of the companies of course there would be plenty of companies maybe around 20 to 25% of the company it would also hire with cgpa more than 8 but if you talk about the big time hiring big time hiring happens with cgpa 7 and above as such so guys those who are in the borderline cgpas what i mean by saying borderline cgpas somebody is with a cgpa uh, 6.9 remember this guy will be certainly deprived when the eligibility is 7 no summing up no round up no mathematics workout here 
So you have so GPA seven, min seven, then only you shall be eligible as such. And apart from career, the second competency which you require, all of us know definitely your cognitive skill, your coding skills, your communication skills, and primarily your core domain competency. So coding, as in your problem solving skills, you got to be really good at. Definitely, nothing happens without communication. All of us know communication is the probably you can say one of the paramount requirements of hiring. Yes, cognitive skill that comprises your verbal ability, your quantitative ability, your reasoning ability. This apart, your core domain knowledge. You need to really know your subject. So naturally, that could be indicated with your CGP as such. At itself, again, a sign of your eligibility. But that doesn't mean supposing CGP is with CGP nine and above, they won't be questioned. Every student would be certainly assessed on their domain area competency and knowledge. You cannot take that for granted. Every hiring definitely emphasizes that. So you need to have very strong access, strong hold as far as your domain subjects are concerned, alongside your problem solving ability. Yes, one more thing I would also say as far as the, your niche area competencies are concerned. Well, in the present race, you must have seen. Guys are subscribing to several niche area competencies. Maybe a lot of guys are doing courses on AI, courses on ML, courses on cloud computing. There are several areas of competency where where guys are definitely going in for. But let me remind you one thing: definitely these 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 competencies are desirable, but never a prerequisite. Remember, remember one thing: these are never a prerequisite. These are desirable. So once you are strong in your basics, then you get into such kind of competencies. Probably this might add up to your resume. This might actually make the recruiters understand: yes, this boy has really gone through a proper channel. And there is no point citing several certifications, several certificates, or several documents without having sound idea on your primary domain or your basic competencies. You know, guys. As far as fresher hiring is concerned, never any company gets involved with complications. They would always like to see your fundamental knowledge has to be clear. Once they get ascertained, yes, the fundamental level of knowledge of this student is already okay. Then they delve into those areas which you have already cited in your resume document. That is why resume document happens to be a real time powerful document or the credential of your own competency. And there are a lot of people who fall into that trap by citing several competency like like uh, jack of all trades, and I mean I mean I mean they do not know anything at all. And it is always the best as far as your your primary competency is concerned. If those are in place itself, probably that will give you a headway for the next round of the question or next round of competency. I urge all of you, please don't simply go blinded by such kind of you know. Advertisement or many of your, you know, seniors, your friends saying, "Chalo, yar, let, let us do a course on ML. Let us do something on cloud computing. Let us get certified with some other, you know, competency." But please, before venturing into all those areas, I would urge all of you make it a point to talk to the teachers who are into the scenario. Have a round of discussion with the faculty members from CAS itself. They will guide you properly. With respect to your own competency and preparedness, supposing just see uh, you may you may talk to Doctor uh, Panda. I mean, uh, or your from your coding area, you can talk to Professor Baral. You can talk to Professor Shudhansu. You can talk to Professor Mohanty, or for that matter, anyone among us. Before you take such, I mean, harsh decision on yourself without delving more into the complications, it is better to have a round of discussion. And get to know exactly regarding your preparedness. Then probably some kind of mentoring which will happen will enable you to uh, give you a proper birth and proper knowledge. Yeah. So when it comes to such kind of niche area learning, I do, I do, I must say one thing exactly. Let let us learn in terms of competency and let us execute in terms of project. There are a lot of people who get certified we have, who who have a bit of knowledge about some niche. If these guys implement those skills in their own projects, then probably that would be a kind of phenomenal contribution to the resume document. That would certainly be a kind of game changer for you guys. 
because that would give the kind of impression to the recruiters yes this boy has really worked in that area with a model example with a specific prototype so guys so there are a lot to speak exactly but yes why this session as such i have already made it clear this session is intended to align you with the requirement of the industry this session is intended intended to tell you exactly how you have to prepare and why 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 in fact you know uh, a session has happened at this point of time there are a lot of things which we need to learn at this point of time today itself in terms of the rules and regulations from placements in terms of your uh, conduct and behavior which is expected to be showcased not only before the i mean recruiters but during this kind of you know interactions as well so more i mean to come exactly and with this i i uh, i wish you the very best let the year 2022 be a year of achievement for all of you so guys please don't feel i mean lonesome in the present scenario i understand you are into utter hardship because uh, we have been uh, you know moving digitally because probably no the option has come up to this level yes but remember as far as this journey is concerned this is not a lonesome journey we guys are co passenger with you we would be certainly walking with you till you really succeed so at no point of time nobody should to feel that he is a loner he is traveling across the entire journey i mean alone himself no take us for granted in this scenario i'm telling you we are definitely going to be as far as uh, going to be a part of your entire journey till you certainly succeed if we keep a track of that so our, our our you know journey together shall continue for a span of time i mean as far as the next one and a half years you know uh, you know journey is concerned as far as the campus drive the campus placements so with my heartiest good wishes may fortune smile on you uh, may you come up to your own expectation or expectation of your parents with this i thank you very much for being a part of this event late this evening i would certainly appreciate your interest and zeal although i find attendance is not up to the mark we expected more than uh, i mean 1000 students uh, to be here in the session but again very close to 700 guys are here it's okay still we are not giving up right and let us deserve and desire so in order to make yourself a deserving candidate we will definitely keep no stones unturned a lot of training programs and other activities will start from the month of january very soon cas is going to roll out the regular classroom which we have been doing for the last uh, one one year almost and uh, especially the last semester and uh, with this i hand over the session to professor avishek once again thank you all my good wishes tonight thank you sir thank you sir uh, for your enlightening uh, thank you view to the students uh, now i would like to request dr saranjit singh sir director of industry engagement center and placement to address the group thank you thank you professor abhishek and uh, it was really wonderful listening to professor biswal and uh, he has covered everything end to end and has i think has shared a lot of things i mean which does make sense for the students to join for this orientation program today uh, i joined little late i'm so sorry uh, i just wanted to know abhishek sir which are the target branches in this third phase of the orientation sir I'm here we are having uh, students from all the four schools school of electronics mechanical electrical and civil and chemical right all okay. all the rest right so thank you professor abhishek for this update just i wanted to i was been uh, aware that this uh, uh, i mean schedule has been prepared in such a fashion that the third session we are having with the core branches uh, but i just wanted to doubly share before i speak my mind with the students uh, first of all uh, hearty welcome to all the students here on the call uh, it is little late in the evening and at a very short notice you all have come and uh, have agreed to listen to us i know uh, i mean listening to a monologue like this where probably you all have been muted forcefully and probably you don't have uh i mean chance to interact right now is something very sometimes i mean it's very boring as well and uh, though we will be taking some questions from the chat box and we'll be having a small q and a session but this 
my dear friends uh, please make it a note that this is a very first of an kind interaction happening with all of you very soon uh, maybe in the coming month we'll be having a discipline wise or a branch wise whatever way you want to classify uh, orientations and interactions where at least uh, a little deeper level of interaction will happen what we are seeing today first of all so we are very sorry that this will be kind of a monologue with few q and a sessions number 1 number 2 the basic purpose of this orientation is actually orientation or you can say in the form of sensitization where we wanted to sensitize you on certain uh, you can say opportunities which are knocking your doors and why i'm saying opportunities even for all of you uh, non cs it students including electronics as well uh for the circuital students electronics and circuit branches that is basically electrical um we do feel that uh, any digital engineering opportunity is something which has been made for them but that is not true so here i want to clarify a little bit but maybe a little later when we will have more one to one deeper interactions i'll be able to um uh, or we will all should be able to i mean clarify more doubts in your mind but i do consider mechanical and civil as well or the other core branches that is chemical also to be a part of this in digital journey uh, as far as the career is concerned and the reason is uh, let me just uh, bring it to your notice that uh, some some three and half years back i was at mumbai and i was been talking to then chro of tata motors and that was happening in one of the offices of tata motors in mumbai and uh, uh, mr chandel who used to be the chro then he used to sit into pune office but being a chro he used to move around and used to come to uh, tata motors mumbai office as well and he was a part of one of the functions where kit conducted at pune and he actually was the evangelist and he did an opening remarks as well and i was talking with him regarding certain issues pertaining to reskilling skilling and the things happening in the areas of automobile and related field and you will all will be surprised to know that he expressed himself and he said very clearly that dr singh uh, right now as a chro of a big company and a old company which has got a market presence since long years i have been plagued with reskilling of my own employees and he said that with the tata legacy coming into uh, i i am not like other newly formed corporates or recent corporates which has come up in last 20 25 30 years where we believe on a lot of hiring and firing kind of and stuff so i i i mean the 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 legacy here is that whatever people we have recruited they will retire uh, from the company that's how tata sons are so he what he meant to say was and tata motors on the manufacturing and assembly lines over a period of time they have recruited so many iti's diplomas and plain graduates who later did some technical courses and been working in the company at pune location or at jamshedpur location or maybe any other assembly plants in lucknow or uttarakhand and other places and the automobile industry he said is one of the was one of the most uh, you can say disrupted industry during those times because of the advent of uh, autonomous vehicles because of the advent of uh, uh, i mean battery operated vehicles and electric vehicles rather you can say so because of this evs and uh, autonomous vehicle things coming into picture the entire company was supposed to get modernized so modernization it was not only with respect to the assembly plants or manufacturing plants or with respect to manufacturing processes and manufacturing systems or or or, or related with those stuff as a chro as a head of the hr he he firmly believed and which he was correct that the organizations are represented by the hr resources so the hr resources the entire uh a uh, manpower which the company was having was supposed to be reskilled because the entire 
technology shift happening in the vehicle was from IC engines towards electric vehicles. So he said that Sanjit, if you can imagine, if we have ten thousand moving parts today in an IC engine car or a vehicle, it is going to reduce to two hundred moving parts, and the entire transmission, entire engine, entire uh, uh, power systems and power trains, everything has to be changed accordingly. Now this all. means that there has to be complete reskilling of the people there on the shop floor and he was searching for partners fortunately and unfortunately kit proposed and pitched in to be a partner to help tata motors reskill but uh, the the offer was been backed by bits pilani and bits pilani has been in last 3 4 years of time has been deeply involved with them with the reskilling of their employees now why i have brought this into picture for, at least for those students who are from core branches right now here see this reskilling project we dominantly which was happening at a company like tata motors and if you are keeping tap on let's say how the corporates are coming up uh, as far as their businesses are concerned and if you look into the share prices of tata motors in last two years has rose from some 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 300% now This, this this is one company let me tell you very frankly tata motors which is going to be watched for the next 3 4 years and 5 years down the line you can see the kind of the series of different new vehicles with the different platforms and the different designs as far as exteriors and interiors are concerned tata motors have been rolling in in last 4 5 years now this entire thing has possible only when they are brought digital into picture now we do confuse digital with it primarily it is basically a platform it is basically a mean to do the digitalization so tata motors today if you ask any of their senior people they will say they will if you ask what segment you are as far as industry is concerned they will never say they are into automobile segment primarily they will say we are into digital automobile so today if tata motors have to come and hire from kit they will not look say, look into per se mechanical engineer uh from that front but they will look into digital mechanical engineers now what do you mean by digital mechanical engineers what do you mean by digital civil engineers what do you mean by digital electrical engineers so definitely there will be an extent of digitalization which you have to learn it could be 20% 30% 40% but there has to be a bit of that learning which has to come into a bigger way and if you want to force your career even in the core sector even in the core industry i am not saying that probably learning programming long languages will make you a digital engineer but understanding of embedded systems understanding of middleware firmware understanding of industrial iot understanding of applications of all these digital it platforms and a bit of coding or a no coding solutions so people have been today talking about no coding solutions so they are already codes routines platforms which are been there functions which are been there which are been called can be assembled together and a product can be created i'm saying an it product so people have been talking on that and people have been talking about digitalization of entire manufacturing systems or let's say when you talk about electrical engineering power transmissions or <clears throat> sorry uh, anything related with electrical is completely will not digitalize whether you call it smart transmissions or whatever not so one thing is very much clear today that please you are to be looked as a interdisciplinary engineers you are not going to come and say okay baba i have learned few basic subjects in power plant engineering it means that i am very well equipped to go and join tata power or adani power or any power limited company in that sense today a power engineer need to understand lot of overlaps with electronics with electricals and so on so for core branch engineering there is a bit more you can say a uh, pressure to understand more on the interdisciplinary things which are happening we are trying to bring a sea change in the syllabus of this core engineering which will definitely over a period of time we have been reviewing syllabus but it will going to come but by this time you are already in third year you need to understand how the market is going to come up see this covid in last 18 months or 2 years of time has advanced the entire thing probably which was supposed to happen 10 years 15 years down the line by another, by by 2 years of time so we are seeing a big disruption 
not only in industry but even in the educational field now universities like kit has to reinvent themselves to figure out that how probably the education system is going to be there in next 2 years 3 years down the line and it will be completely in hybrid mode and different kinds of things which we have been talking about so for the next 6 months most of you guys who are from the core branches have to understand the pulse of industry you have ample time of 6 to 8 months where you can add certain badges of skilling reskilling where you can learn some low codes or no code platforms you can start working on certain interdisciplinary projects where you can have those overshooted knowledge and experience of working in groups uh, mixed with embedded systems and electronics and electrical and civil and so on let's say digital civil engineering for civil engineering you people are i mean they always come forward and tell me sir i want to go into site i want to work in this field i want to be manning the sites whether it is infrastructure whether it is roads or whether it is uh, geotechnical or whatever but dear friends today civil engineering is also a digital civil engineer which is the actually uh, the, the 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 demand of the market today the demand of the time so what do you mean by digital civil engineering people you might be knowing about building information modeling now building information modeling is nothing but it is a cluster of large number of softwares where end to end you will not only look into the designing part but also the operational and execution part of any of the projects and everything all these softwares are club together brought on a single platform and a very user friendly drop down menu based uh, user experience platforms uh, are uh, are been created and these softwares are available on handheld devices so it could be either in the form of your smartphones which can have those softwares or maybe a small ipads or something of that sort and you can sit remotely and you can execute everything so gone are those days when probably in a project site as a civil engineer you will note down on the piece of paper or maybe on the register the bill of materials and the materials been issued from the stores and then you will see how many labor has come and so on and then you again put into those excel files and those excel files used to give uh, the information to the project managers that how the cpm and part is going to happen and whether the project is going to complete within the time or not now it's all one single push and buttons on the softwares now this is what the change happening now if today you start learning all these platforms little bit and then you go to the market then you say that hey i am a digital civil engineer who has a knowledge of let's say bim on the operational side and these are certain softwares i have just seen it even the companies will be very very happy and they will be mesmerized to offer you jobs and giving you a long term career ahead so the objective of today's orientation is to make you understand that the the way forward is digital you have to understand the pulse of the corporate and the industry reposition yourself synergize your energy put into right directions we will come back strongly in the month of january where we are thinking of bringing some basic programming skills which will be imparted to all the students in respective of the branches and it is very very critical and important for all the core branches to listen here that you have to master that basic basic programming skills so that a level playing field is created and if you create that level playing field you are good enough with the kind of content which you come for expecting that the content knowledge is there you are brushing up those the subjects which you are teaching and which you have been actually going through in the classrooms or smart classrooms uh you will able to crack any of those companies now this is for the general orientation i am saying for those guys who still want to go a little higher orbital shift in digital engineering and you are doing lot of coding in the areas of let's say data sciences or maybe in the supply chain using certain data sciences or maybe in cloud irrespective of coming from any any branches you also need to polish your stuff accordingly and there are a lot of happenings around this so called it world and right now this year 2022 batch in last 3 months we have brought in 20 200 plus companies and we have already have almost 3000 single offers more than 4200 to 4300 total offers with an average package right now 3000 students sitting at 6 lakhs plus if i have to uh, arrange all the students 
in the in the in their ctc from let's say are a descending order from starting from top to bottom the top 1400 to 1500 students average salary is more than 8 lakhs now this is something as close as two nits you can say where kit has rolled out with a very very high package one single company in the area of fintech let's say i have to drop the name high radius which was there in the campus they offered a ppo of 650 plus right now still we are in the halfway midway of the journey of high radius internship program with an 8 lakhs uh, lpa now there is not a single incident in the pan india where one dream status company works in the campus and offers 650 to 700 offers with 8 lakhs per annum of uh, opportunity now this is a unique history which has been created here so right now we have we have uh, uh, done one incident and a process of a uh, not process exactly but we have initiated the process of easy cool which was a part of epic identify now epic identify is a is a is a is a, a fintech startup we just celebrated epic day kind of and stuff here and the forms have been rolled out there are a lot of students from core branches who have shown interest but apart from that uh, a day after we have a proper orientation today we have notified for the highway to high radius program and in the high radius program uh, i'll request abhishek to dwell more on the streams and the domains which they look into so there are two basic streams so one they call it tech track the another they call it business track and in the business track there are two sub tracks they call it sales and marketing and another is consulting and they hire a good uh, a numbers from core branches and from electronics from com uh, sorry from 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 electrical mechanical and civil and allied branches and chemical as well probably if the students are there who can venture into sales and marketing and on in the consulting area there is a ample opportunity and the way they are growing and the way their appetite has been growing they i can i can i can bet that probably if you do a little bit on your communication skills and if you work a little bit harder on your skills as per requirement of the company you can bag an offer much early in your campus so i'm just cited these two companies which are much early in the campus as a, a, a early campus hiring program which is like a one and a half years of engagement program where in the next six next semester that is the sixth semester they will have caption projects so your projects will be mapped and rolled out along with the company which will be known as caption projects and you will be actually undergoing some of the electives to be mapped with the electives of the uh, minor in the fintech engineering area those will be a part of this journey but the kind of learning which you will get imparted within the campus just imagine if you would have been physically here you would have been actually working physically with this all subject matter experts coming from the various companies the kind of enrichment of your knowledge and the way of your working would have drastically improved so that you would have qualified any job any campus which you might be eyeing in your life my dear friends bagging a campus offer is extremely important and that too in these difficult times we are all been living in a very closed day tight compartments confined because of emergence of so many variations and variants of this covid uh, uh, viruses which has been happening and because of that you never know if maybe down the line 3 years 4 months when the campuses may get opened up but still sitting at the home our faculty members and our university and our leadership has done tremendous job and tremendous effort has been put into so that probably you can have a good career start bagging in a, a, a opportunity or a campus offer is extremely important so we are also looking into that that when you graduate from here you must have a minimum one offer to start with your career and i wish you all the best there will be lot many companies with engagement programs which will be rolled out in coming days uh, these are the two companies i dropped the name but for the month of january onwards you will find many other companies which will start coming in pouring in obviously the so called core companies come little late in the campus to hire because their campus planning their 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 manpower planning happens a little late as compared to the it or the consulting firms but there are a lot of consulting firms which will come into picture so people who want to do mbas or they want to do hard studies in business management probably want to have an, a small stint of experience with the big fours all big fours are here in the campus whether you talk about deloitte or pwc or kpmg this year pwc has done six different processes 
KPMG has hired almost 150 plus guys. Deloitte has hired 200 people from the campus. And that is the kind of opportunities we are bringing on the table here. So people who want to do an MBA from abroad or maybe an IAMS or maybe somewhere else, probably after two, three years of time, the best fit for you is to go and aspire and prepare and bag a consulting offer, get exposed to working in a consulting environment. It could be an IT consulting, it could be a business consulting or whatever, but you will be exposed to a lot of client servicing. And this will help you fetching into some of the best MBA programs, maybe globally and becoming a global leader. Now, this all can happen when you are a little serious and you plan it right now. So we normally do this orientation a little fag end of the sixth semester. We felt that we will start catching a little early and start reorienting yourself. We will again come back, as I said, uh, branch-wise or discipline-wise, whatever you say, uh, orientations where we will have more deeper interactions. We'll listen to your questions and we'll try to have these counseling sessions one-to-one. With this, I wish you all the best. I wish that you will put up a good show in whatever we are trying to bring as far as the campus opportunities are concerned at KIT and you will present yourself very properly to whatever opportunities we bring in. I, I, I pass on the baton to Professor Abhishek to take, take, it, take it ahead from here. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. So now I would like to invite Dr. Shimon Bhattacharya, Director Cast, to address the gathering. Yeah, thank you, Professor Vishay. Good evening, uh, students, my dear colleagues. It is almost a delayed evening, you can say, and majority of the people have dinner time. But I'll not spend much time because uh, Professor Biswal, Professor Singh, uh, Professor Vishay already uh, pointed out, highlighted key important points. Now, uh, looking at the trend of uh, hiring for last uh, few years, or rather I can say more than that, and the kind of input that Professor Singh has given on hybrid engineering part, where digital is by default. Uh, so uh, he highlighted very nicely, gave good examples from Tata Motors manufacturing and how today hybrid cars with AI blended features are coming up and slowly how they are being clubbed with the electric part or means the battery operated or solar operated. Uh, uh, the stuff, you know, uh, that, that brings more uh, uh, flexibility to the entire design process or uh, maybe uh, dependency on, on a renewable source um, is more than non-renewable sources. So that is what the entire shift is happening because you might have seen the Prime Minister's talking one grid, one world sort, sort of uh, 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 slogans, you know, which India is taking part. So but that is one thing that we can expect that in this hybrid uh, technology, uh, digital plus civil, digital plus mechanical, digital plus electrical, and combination of all these uh, three uh, can be a good jump, you know. And then coming up with the devices on electronics, uh, because uh, ultimately the, it has to be embedded into some systems and it has to be delivered. So, so all the four branches here, pretty exciting. Uh, looking into the uh, kind of, but but uh, but your mindset is has to be because digital, you should not feel. It is a computer science subject. No, digital is a shift in which any domain you talk about is getting shifted and you all have to be part of that, right? And uh, coming to the next point of my discussion, if I look at uh, the consulting company, forget about uh, IT companies today. They are no more IT as such, but these are all consulting companies. They consult to different verticals, you know, they consult to heavy engineering vertical, they consult to uh, electrical power uh, industry, they consult to uh, construction industry, you know. So in that case, uh, a blend of digital and civil, digital, mechanical, digital, electrical is a good combination as a domain and digital uh, tools are concerned, right? And Professor Singh has pointed out this digital is not coding, so uh, don't bother about much. But why coding we are emphasizing here? Because unless you do coding, uh, because coding is the path in which you can actually solve a complex problem you know if you if you look at today's industry they're talking about machine learning uh, to be implemented in certain uh, certain uh, machines or maybe on automation maybe on your <clears throat> hybrid technology then understanding of that is very very important and when hiring takes place by an industry they basically want to check whether actually you have understood the problem or not whether you can write a pseudo code you may not be able to write uh, the entire code with the proper syntax, but whether you know how to write a pseudocode or not, because the logic is clear or not. 
or the algorithm that you are going to apply for solving a problem is clear or not okay so that is why we are pushing harder to you people for learning uh, problem solving skill and implementing those in some languages at least so that uh, whenever the written examination takes place you should get uh, and, and and clear the exams and all so don't don't uh, think this uh, consulting uh, firm like it consulting or or other consulting firms are typically hiring computer science but they also hire uh, core branch people because core branch has an advantage of domain knowledge you know when i talk about consulting on heavy engineering that means definitely mechanical manufacturing has an clear cut edge over the computer science in this area right so that is what uh, the blend has to take place the mindset has to come into 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 your mind to really start thinking in this direction so coding is for problem solving to clear the written examination and rest of the world like what kind of projects i am doing on hybrid part or electric vehicle part that is another way in which i can really uh, take part and create a good projects report out of this right so that is uh, that is one aspect that i wanted to highlight you people so don't uh, feel shy or get uh, get away from this uh, digital technology or the tool uh, part of it because professor singh has nicely pointed out if you go to any manufacturing today high heavy automation will find uh, a lot of uh, erp applications you know uh, that they are running in the back end so what is this erp is again is a digital tool right so in that case unless and until i, I understand this uh, entire sort of what kind of tools are being used and how the automation takes place going to a shop floor how manufacturing robotics manufacturing happening how arvr is playing a major role in this so these are all tools and technology for uh, manufacturing uh, or sorry for for core engineering you know and these are the digital tools which are to be blended on your study curriculum and also practiced as a project course so then then clear cut you will get an advantage uh, out out of this so in kit advantage is that if you are really Uh, good at uh, a digital part you have opportunity to go into it company if you are good at blended part you are good at going to some company uh, like uh, who are into electric vehicle or hybrid technology manufacturing uh, sort of thing so uh, lot of companies coming but thing is that are you identifying the right set of skill or are you actually uh, training ourselves to the right kind of skill needed right so one is the written examination where aptitude english your basic problem solving those are those will be checked second part is your project that you are going to do or you are already doing maybe uh, that should be i suggest all of you it should be on a hybrid sort of thing or electric vehicle automation sort of thing so then you will get a clear cut edge you will understand how digital technologies are being used for the entire core engineering part of it so if you can do this blend of these two like your written examination part definitely is going to taken care of and your core engineering uh, your project part plus core engineering knowledge part you know because we have got platform in which a lot of questions are being uh, given from uh, uh, for basics or advanced level and all so you should practice all those questions in my properties and then see that how uh, how we can we can bring in a difference into the entire uh, recruitment process right and second part is that it is not only restricted to company job and all so for core we do have Uh, like we have got tied up with for good gate preparation also we have got uh, good agencies are being tied up who can uh, who can train you to uh, being a, a best in class result because gate score today also many uh, psu are uh, looking into so that that is another aspect of it in which you can start preparing for it as well and then we have got another wing on if you are interested for the government civil service and all all those things are also being being uh, opportunities are being provided as a, as a training right so for a core engineering students Uh, don't uh, don't be panic or something like that you be study whatever professor singh or professor biswal or abhishek sir already pointed out and i also gave you some input on this so try to bring a balance on this two part and really focus don't get defocused any type problem you are facing ki this is not happening you, uh, you just connect with all of us we are there to help you out 24 cross 7 entire team of tnp cas is there so we are going to help you out but your onus of learning is on you and you should uh, really do well and if you really do well then definitely nobody can stop you to get get the things done right so this is all like uh, i was talking to few of these oem you know uh, original equipment manufacturers of all big plants you know they also hire good quality very innovative engineers so why not from kit you should we should produce some innovative engineers who can be part of this entire oem industry today manufacturing in india or make in india sort of things which happening then this oem will take 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 a big role 
and they also can hire a good number of uh, students with uh, innovative mindset right so this is all i thought of sharing with all of you because you are from core engineering and you should focus purely on whatever all of us suggested and you'll see the brilliant career ahead right so this is uh, from my side thanks a lot and all the best to all of you over to you abhishek sir thank you suman sir thank you for providing a 360 degree angle thank you sir. for understanding the student's career how exactly the student would like to take their career ahead and in which field uh, the uh, career and uh, what could be the trainings which can support them to build up their career thank you again sir so um, uh, now i would like to request dr pratapya sir uh, to address uh, the gathering so i will be requesting uh, sir to uh, pick, uh, make it a little fast as the time is already 10 so because it's already a dinner time so we may request you to a little bit more fast to complete your deliveries thank, thank you sir. thank you uh, so much sir uh, in the interest of the time and also in the interest of the benefit of our students uh, it is uh, my prime responsibility to quickly uh, get all of you after a wonderful deliberations by all our esteemed uh, professors and leaders uh, of training and placement department with all the perfectly uh, pitched in informations please work on it to be successful also in in the regular uh, campus placements quickly a note on of uh, for for all the students uh, present here uh, please uh, mark uh, these important criteria to participate during the campus placements point number 1 uh, here i would like to make it here very specifically your career should, should be 6.0 minimum career which visual sir has already pointed out in the beginning it is very important in, in that aspect so 6.0 career means btech 6.0 Plus two six point zero and tenth also six point zero. With and when whenever you are calculating the aggregate, ensure that all the subjects uh, are covered and aggregate is taken on all the subject mentioned in your mark sheet. Then um, when we talk about six point zero, five point nine nine is not equals to six point zero. Five 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 point nine nine is not eligible. So year there should not be year gaps. Uh, particularly some companies they allow year gaps between tenth and Twelfth uh, or between twelfth and B Tech, right? So, but uh, generally they do not uh, accept the year gaps in the B Tech programs. So, all companies that you are going to sit for, they aspire it that uh, this would be uh, the company. You uh, know, if you are sitting on Epic and Kindify, do not uh, try to reveal uh, the fact that uh, Hyridius is there, or when you are sitting in Hyridius process, Epic and Kindify you have sat for. all this is for your benefit to ensure that we get more opportunities as we have a huge pool of talent and we want to attract more companies so let us uh, ensure that whichever companies is there for, for the time being till next few months the first companies is there uh, whichever companies you are sitting for they are your first companies you are do not have information much about other companies give importance to that company that day. communications will be laid out from the training and placement department all of you must ensure that you uh, compulsorily join the superset platform which will in intimate to all of you uh, where all your information will be captured you you have to also uh, take use of the telegram our whatsapp and university uh, email ids these communications will be done to this uh, medias which are very important and ensure that this is uh, um, uh, you know uh, kept uh, in a very proper way um, to be communicated so please uh, be aware about your atpos your associate deans of your respective schools for school of electronics school of uh, mechanical um, and school of electrical engineering uh, pretty pretty well and uh, we we can also give information on that to all of you and all the pl- platform to communication is for the notices so that you do not get biased by or or get uh, upset with different kinds of uh, rumors and uh, misinformations please follow our official notification uh, which is very very important and uh, get guided by that along with the professors from cas from tnp and also from your respective schools and um, last but not the least there are a couple of more things which is uh, your pan card aadhar card passports these documents are very very important if you have not made it please make it with authentic information there they are very vital for participating in the drive and also in internship programs and post joining the uh, organization and uh, maintain one mobile numbers for communications which is very prime importance for uh, the scenarios so we will be also communicating and orienting from time to time based on different needs training uh, 
requirements and and from from the scenarios so with this uh, short uh, important points but these are very vital important points we'll also uh, try to send in informations so with this i wish you all the best um, to everybody present um, um, over here our students particularly and definitely 2023 graduating batch will bring more laurels for and and again uh, another new history will be created thank you all of you and best wishes okay thank you thank all you, of you sir over to you thank you sir